Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video, and this is a little recap of One Hive Alpha's very first arranged war. Awesome job to them, congrats on winning their first arranged war, and doing it by a margin of eight stars, which is huge. Um, especially in a 30v30 war when there's just less stars on the table to take. So they really did an awesome job. They should be proud of themselves. And it was mainly the One Hive Alpha core members that led this uh, war. And there were a few people from Genesis, I think, that uh, came over for the war. But for the most part, it was the people in Alpha that got the job done. So nice job, guys. And uh, real quick, we'll take a look at some attacks. But first, if your clan is not quite the same weight as Genesis, maybe you don't have any Town Hall 11s, not quite as many Town Hall 10s, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think you can go on our website and uh, hit up One Hive Alpha for potentially doing an arranged war because I think they're looking to do some more in the future. So I'm not exactly sure on all the specifics, but if you check out our website, link in the description, uh, if your clan fits the criteria and you're looking for an arranged war with a clan that's about this weight, I think that One Hive Alpha may be able to help you uh, just for clans that are lower weight than Genesis. But that being said, let's take a look at the war, how it went, and you can see here that uh, they got the two stars, uh, two stars all of our Town Hall 10s. We did the same thing, but the difference was the Town Hall 9s. We actually had nine Town Hall 9s uh, not be three star, just two star, and that was a huge difference. So awesome job to our Town Hall 9 base builders getting the job done. We got all the Town Hall 10s two-starred, like I said, and just one Town Hall 9 was left two-starred, the rest were three-starred. So the Town Hall 9s got it done in Alpha, and a solid performance, the Town Hall 10s held it down, got all the bases two-starred at least, which set us up for the win. So uh, great job, like I said, to the people at Alpha. We'll take a look at a few of the attacks, and I think what this video will show is that even after the update, because all these attacks are after the update that I'm showing, uh, the ones before got wiped clean. All these attacks that I'm going to show today are pretty much going to be working the same way. The update didn't change a whole lot, uh, just some possibly some queen walks and uh, mainly stuff at Town Hall 10, I think, to be honest. So we're going to look at some Town Hall 9 attacks and you'll see that they're pretty much the same stuff and it, you really don't have to change a whole lot to, to get the three star with these old strategies. So anyway, this is Amsterdam, and he's coming in with a stoned hobo, I think is what it's called. This guy was a little bit of a troll, put three baby dragons in his CC, which can be effective because they do uh, do a solid amount of splash damage, but you, you don't get that same bonus from having just the single baby dragon. That being said, his troops are coming in. The queen's going to take out those baby dragons, then move into the base. You can see did a great job creating the funnel for his bowlers. Pops the queen's ability because she was taking damage. And I like the uh, choice for the attack strategy on this base because whenever you see a bunch of the point defense and even the splash damage all kind of in this gridded core of the base like this and you can use a few jumps to get in there the bowlers will get some great value and you can see there's not a whole lot of spots for giant bombs until they're pretty deep into the base so you know the bowlers are going to take out quite a big part of the base and these few hogs for these defenses that the bowlers can't quite reach is also a nice compliment the queen sits back and gets some great value also both his heroes are still up have pretty uh, good amounts of health left the hogs are going to finish off these last few defenses had that like that poison on the scale he's still being a alert uh, noticing that he has the poison and the skellies are chasing his hogs so good job dropping it there uh, these last two hogs will take out that archer tower and now it's just clean up so like i said good base identification these compact bases tend to be good for a stoned hobo especially if you have high level heroes like amsterdam so nice attack to amsterdam we'll move on to the next attack uh, number 13 i believe this is was it crusher i think this is yeah crusher taking on 13 and this one is kind of just you know taking the base at face value seeing that the queen is next to the air defense so really all he has to do is drop down a golem his heroes especially with those level 30 heroes and he can get in there get the queen taken out get the air defense taken out and from there just use his lava hounds and balloons to storm the rest of the base so you'll see he'll actually drop the heal spell by accident i think he was going for a poison so he does this with one less spell actually because he really doesn't get any value for the for the heal spell only like one troop those golemites are inside of it so uh, a little bit of a slip up there, but it doesn't cost him too much. And one thing to notice about this base here is that it, it's a it's it's not only a good base to do a 
uh, single golem, I forget what it's called, uh, cold-blooded, I think, a cold-blooded uh, La Luna attack, not just because the queen and the air defense are easily accessible, but also because you can see there are a few wizard towers and a few archer towers just right there handy, so the queen and his kill squad get extra value. You're not just getting the, the air defense and the queen, but you're also getting these wizard towers, these archer towers, which would otherwise be targeting your balloons. So I think that also shows for base builders, um, typically have cannons, have stuff like that that's only uh, good for targeting ground troops, put that by your queen and make it so that if someone wants to come in with their kill squad, they're not going to get any bonus buildings, they're just going to deal with cannons, which would otherwise not be doing anything to the, to the air part of the attack anyway. But you can see he gets some awesome value for his kill squad, just comes in with these balloons, a little bit sketchy on that last air defense that just went down on the top left there, because the Lava Hound had died a little prematurely, but the balloons were able to take it out just barely, and that last air defense goes down right as the last Lava Hound pops. Uh, so the balloons are taking quite a bit of damage right here, but has that last haste to propel them into these last few defenses, and they'll get in here, and despite the splash damage of the Wizard Tower, get it taken out. So nice attack to Crusher, good base identification, and gets it done really with one less spell than typically what a Town Hall 9 has because of that, I guess, swag heal spell, if you call it that. I, just a mistaked heal spell. Anyway, though, nice attack to Crusher. We'll move on, and this is going to be a pretty cool attack. We're looking at number 20. Um, this is, I believe, can't remember quite now, 007. Yeah, that's who it was. And this is just kind of taking the base apart piece by piece, deciding what each part of the base uh, its weakness is, and going in there and getting it done with that. So you can see here, starts off with a few wizards for the funnel comes in with these golems and basically what he's identifying is a few things. On this base you can see those three air defenses don't appear to be too clumped together but really if you go in there at the right angle you can get all three of those air defenses taken out especially with a solid kill squad like this that has a few golems, the heroes and the bowlers in the CC. So that jump spell will connect everything right there and his troops will start moving into the base. Does a nice job on the funnel. Got to make sure you get a nice funnel on your bowlers, and he does right there. Uh, CC troops come out, has the poison. But also what he's identifying is that the queen is going to be pretty difficult to get with the kill squad. She's just too uh, isolated over there on the left. So he's going to use a few dragons to get in there and take her out. That way he doesn't have to worry about the queen taking out his balloons or anything uh, because the kill squad can't quite reach her. So drops in those dragons. I also like that one balloon he drops in just to test for seeking air mines. Turns out there wasn't any, but uh, if one dragon goes down to a seeking air mine, it's possible the queen might not go down. So nice insurance there to make sure that the queen's going to go down because that's pretty important to the attack. Uh, right here comes in with two lava hounds and balloons to you know take out the rest of the base here. That first lava hound will pop and the second one will stay up and still tank. Uh, the Tesla farm was right next to the queen there so he does have to deal with that but you'll see as everything moves in because that lava hound's just a little bit faster I think it's going to get out in front and it's going to tank for those Teslas. So really, the balloons aren't taking any damage from here on out, even though they're going through the Tesla farm. He had that last haste to propel everything into the Tesla farm, and right here they're going down along with that dragon who's helping with cleanup. So just an awesome, great planned, well thought out attack uh, to get the three star taken out each base segment by segment. We'll go ahead and fast forward because cleanup is a little slow, but gets the job done. Just turned out he had dragons and balloons, which aren't the quickest cleanup troops, but a few lava pups to help out as well. Gets the three star, nice attack. Uh, one more for you guys. We have number 29. I wish I had some Town Hall 8 action to be honest, but they just didn't roll with any Town Hall 8s. This was a Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 9 war, which typically is what arranged wars are. So I guess I should have said that at the beginning of the video. I don't think they typically roll with too many Town Hall 8s, so just keep that in mind if you're looking to do an arranged war with one Hive Alpha. But this last attack is by Jay Munez. Munez, yeah. Uh, Jay Munez coming in here with just some Valks and some Hogs. A little bit old-fashioned, but gets the job done. Uh, you guys might notice we're not doing any Queen Walks today. I didn't see any because uh, these are all the attacks after the update. I think people are still a little bit... Uh, skittish to do queen walks just because of the healers going down the seeking air mines but don't worry you guys will see uh, all the new solutions we come up with on the channel and uh, I'll be talking through kind of the state of what queen walks are at and kind of what you can do now at Town Hall 9 
to uh, to three star bases really what the new meta is now that healers aren't quite as powerful so we'll, we'll see it'll be interesting to see how people adapt over the next few days but I'll be sure to cover it and let you guys know what's happening on the on the top war scene in one hive genesis at least so anyway I like that one hog on the cannon just to take it out uh, you know his kill squad couldn't quite reach it so good value there the Valks kind of go off to the right side here most of them but the king and the queen are going to go off to the left and and uh, I think they take out the enemy queen uh, right there. You can see she's starting to go down. And yeah, she goes down right there. So the queen's eliminated. That uh, that first giant, I think a single giant bomb spot right there was eliminated. Then the double spot up at the top right was also eliminated. So the kill squad came in at a great angle. Not sure if this was cleanup or not. It might have been just because it was so, uh, it, it worked out so well on this base by the giant bomb placement. But maybe it wasn't. I, mean, I don't know. And uh, you can see he has a heal for that last giant bomb and pretty much just crushed this base. Has a ton of hogs left up. I think it might have helped th that the uh, point defense was lower level. But still, you know, his heroes aren't maxed. I mean, they are 25-25, which is, you know, pretty high level, especially for people who aren't in the top war clans. But still, uh, never easy to get a three-star just with, with on, a, on a good anti-three-star base. So good plan, good attack. And you can see he has plenty of troops for cleanup. A few Valks on the right side there and a huge group of hogs making their way through. I think he might have, I think, yeah, he brought CC hogs, which is something you can do. Some people bring Valks, some people bring hogs. Either one works, depends on kind of how your attacks uh, planned out. So nice stuff to Jay Munez. That's going to do it for this video. Like I said, wish I could have showed some Town Hall 10s or Town Hall 8s, but really the main uh, attacks to choose from for this war were Town Hall 9s. So I hope you guys liked what you saw. Uh, you're going to see some awesome coverage of the One Hive Genesis Arranged War this weekend. Probably some live action as well as some uh, just general attacks and uh, maybe a few defensive videos thrown into the mix as well. So be looking for all that good stuff coming out on the channel soon. And I guess I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Bisectatron out.